How many of you are enjoying the weather? Today, I'm enjoying it, amen? My daughter called me because she went to Texas with my mom and dad, and I'm going to tell us because it was negative 20 degrees yesterday. And she says, yeah, it's warm. It's still summer down here. <laughs> hey, man, I love children. I had to come into it. so intro, but it sure is warmer. You know? Hey, man. Uh, we're going to read in Exodus chapter 15. If you've got it, say amen. Exodus chapter 15, verse 2 says, The Lord is my strength. Somebody said amen. And he is my song. Somebody said amen. And he has become my salvation. He is my God. And I will prepare him a habitation. My Father, God, and I will exalt him. Amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated for a moment. I'm going to ask for some volunteers. Who would like to volunteer? Girls want to volunteer? I actually need a volunteer who has a phone or a device that says a card on it. Oh, come on up. I need five people. It's okay. You can bring it out here, okay? Okay. You young people, come on. I know what's about them. I've seen plenty of them. I need one of you. You're taking one. My, you're mine. You're taking one. My, let me get one of those guys and just drag them here. You know what you want to do? Go to Captain Liz. Go to Captain Liz and say, okay, girl. Liz, she's like, oh, my mom was getting on it. Okay, never mind. We got it. I need another volunteer. We only really have two here so far. Oh, yeah. Go grab Luke. Grab Luke just his phone. If your phone is charged, okay, grab your phone then. It's not charged. Go, oh, all right. That's too much of a trip. Come on. Okay, but Sister Anne is coming up. I love the boldness. So as, as, for, as you guys are figuring out what five people is, I'm going to tell you a little story here, okay? Uh, Pastor Boy called me and said, hey, can you preach? This was at like the, the 430 mark, right? Or the three thirty mark, I should say. And I was reminded of his brother. Okay. We're just going to, as a record update, there's three people right now. So we still going to work on two more. Okay. And so I was reminded of his brother. And he's told this story before. If if a pastor or somebody in the church calls you up and says, Hey, I need a favor, and it's Sunday afternoon, you're going to learn what one of the scriptures is called. Be instant, in season, and out of season. Amen. Marissa, we need you to bring your phone. Yeah, that's what they all say. Come on, grab it. I, I, teach, I teach for a living. They all don't have their phone, okay? Everybody doesn't have a phone. You understand in a minute, okay? Everybody's going to understand what's happening. Uh, Over here. Marissa, what's your battery on? Oh, get it. Did you see the one? It has a plus sign. It has positive energies in it. That's good. 34%. Um, Brother Calvin, is that a lot? No? What is your stats in Virginia? Florida? A quarter? Three fourths. Three fourths. Okay. Three fourths. Is that pretty good, Austin? Three fourths of a dollar. That's pretty good. Can you make a phone call on three quarters of a battery? Hopefully, unless you're talking for quite a long time, right? What's the third? What's the strain? What's yours on? 82. 82. That's, that's pretty charged, isn't it? Hey, man. That's more charged than these three other people put together right now. Hey, man. Hey, what, what soda is that, Maya? Eight. Eight? Like, just eight? Is that a lot? No. It's even... Bad. 
in the red. Everybody knows what red means. What's red mean, Brother Austin? I'm going to die. Well, Kayla, what's yours at? 42. 42. The answer to life, the universe, everything right there. What color is it? Yellow. Is that okay? Better than red is right. Yes, amen. Kayla, what's yours at? Wow. 12. Is that pretty good? Yeah. Calvin, do you play games on your phone, right? Would you play your game at 12% charge? You would? How long, how long would you be able to play your games at 12%? Not long. Not long. Okay. Calvin, I ask you this because I love you. Have you played and then the battery went out? Yeah. Oh, man. It's a bummer. 47? It's an odd number. Praise the Lord. Yeah, you're right. 47. Nice. You guys can sit down now. Sister Sheila, what well, you got to do if you're falling that 8%? If you want to use it, right? Uh, if you're Sister Marissa, you know I don't want to. I don't want to use my phone in the church because it's a holy place. She turns it off, right? What happens when you turn off that phone? It conserves battery. You know, this happened to me one time. Does anybody shut off the battery and realize? And then turn it back on again. It's not the same percent. It went down for some reason. Anybody had that happen to you before? I had it happen before. I shut it down at like 15% because I had to come home on the bus to an event. And I turned it back on after the event, and it was like 7%. And I'm like, that was the whole place to turn it off. I was just defeated. Because what did I need? Turn your turn neighbor tell them what I needed. Yeah, you needed a charge, amen. The pastor has been preaching some sermons here about rebooting. Amen? If you reboot your phone, does it change the charge? No. Does it fix problems, though? Sometimes. Amen? So, with, with rebooting this year, pastors talk about rebooting, we all need a reboot spiritually, don't we? We need a reboot and in our prayer life, in our spiritual walk with God. But we also need a recharging. What happens when we have a cellular device or a gaming device or something that requires a battery, it needs a recharge. Um, Brother Calvin, how often do you charge your phone? Not often? Like once a day? Once a week? Not often, right? Who lives with Calvin? I can't let who charges their phone once a week? Just, I believe Sister Debbie. I believe Sister Debbie. Anybody charge it like once a day or more? Like two times a day? Yeah? I, I know I charge mine at least two times a day. It barely makes it to the four o'clock range. And I'm not even doing anything with my phone. It needs a recharge. Right? How many of you are pretty diligent about being recharging your phone because it's your calendar, it's your alarm clock, it's your camera, it's your money, your bank, your Calvin's gaming systems, you need that too, right? It's almost everything nowadays, isn't it? And they need a recharge. Our bodies need a recharge even more so, don't they? It's called sleep. How many of you, I'm going to ask people, who went to sleep? Who goes to sleep at 9 o'clock every night? And gets a recharge. Amanda, yeah. did you do that earlier on? You didn't have kids? No, no, she says, no. Uh, energy, energy, energy draining is what that happens, right? Who stays up later, almost at midnight? Maya, for sure. Oh, oh, Virginia, you stay at midnight? Oh, my goodness. Two or three. Lucius, what do you stay up till? 
He has no comment. Okay. Austin, when do you say how you feel? Tomorrow? Till tomorrow? Well? Whew. How do you feel? Your body just feels drained when you stay up late, doesn't it? I've had these evenings because I was in college for a little bit where we're word is procrastinated, which means put it off till tomorrow. Anybody had to write their paper and they stayed up till three or four in the morning and wrote that paper because they waited until twelve o'clock to start. Yeah, several times. I've done that and you know what the next day feels like? It's a pretty good fog, isn't it? There's not a lot of charge on it at that point. The body's working on fumes, right? You would say the charge is in the air because our body needs a recharge every day. Every, some people, every afternoon, amen. Sunday afternoons is my recharge a lot of times. But our body needs to recharge just as much as our phone. But what's more important than our bodies is our spirit, amen. We can't go a day without reading our Bibles. I put this scripture in Exodus here because of the first part. The Lord is our strength. And he is our song. He has become our salvation. When the people were coming out of, Is- out of Egypt, when the people of Israel were coming out of Egypt, they were drained of their energy because they were working for a slave master. They were working day in and day out. They had to go find their straw and build their own bricks. They got to the point where they were physically drained. They were emotionally and spiritually drained as well. But as they were getting ready to leave, they needed to sit and be reminded of the Lord and our strength. That they needed a spiritual recharge. Amen? How long can you go? How long can your phone go on one charge? Is it a day? Is it 12 hours? Is it three hours? It depends on what few things we're really using it for. If you're playing games and you're using the uh, and you're using the calculator, obviously because you're in school, and that's what phones are used for is calculators. <laughs> At least that's what they tell me. And you're using it for phones and you're leaving it on the whole time. That drains the battery quite a bit, doesn't it? The same thing happens with our spiritual selves. If we are being attacked, if our spiritual life is being attacked, if our family structure is being attacked, that drains us. My wife and I had the privilege of going to some class. Um, and in that class, I talk about parenting and I talk about how there's an energy drain that happens. You know what happens when you start thinking, Kyla? It drains your energy. And, and in that class, the goal of the parent is to not do the thinking, Calvin. It's to get you to do the thinking. Because any parents in the house know that you need some energy to do with children, to do with your children, to do with any person, right? If the more thinking that you have to do, and, and there was this one example that this mom had, and she would she would get on her, her teenage boy about cleaning the cleaning cleaning his room. And she'd go up to his room and say, this place needs to be vacuumed. You need to vacuum this place. And I told you you needed to vacuum because otherwise you're not going to the soccer thing. And then you know she, the kid said was, Why, Mom? And the mom gave an explanation. She said, This, this, and this, and this, this is why. And so they're not going to the game. But mom, they're depending on me. What about them? And the mom gave a few more explanations. She said, This, 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 and this. And then the kid went right to the jugular of the record. He said, But mom, you're going to be the reason that I can't play. The reason that we might lose the game. What are you going to say to my coach? Well, mom had to think of something. All this energy is bringing her down and down because she's got to think of answers. She lives in Maryland. Answering those why that those kids give you. And then she took a class and she learned that she's got to make the kids start thinking. And she, the next time this happened, she told the kid, she told her son, for 15 minutes before, we, before the van leaves, I gotta go with the winter without you. And 
the same process got to be. But mom, what are you going to tell my coach? Why do I have to do this? Well, because he said so. She turned it right back and made him start thinking about it. Made him start answering questions. Made him start thinking. So his energy would be going to hell. You know what? Mom felt a whole lot better because she wasn't doing any work. She wasn't doing any thinking because it was all on the sun. Amen? The more you engage yourself in, the more it's going to drain your energy. The sooner you're going to need that recharge, that reboot. Spiritually speaking, if you're not reading your Bible, because the Lord, he's our strength. He's our song. He's our salvation. If we're not reading our Bible at the beginning of the day, you're not plugging in. And you're going to go lower on your charge. If you don't pray during the day, what's going to happen? Somebody say amen if you get it. Somebody say amen if you get it. Amen. How long can you go without a spiritual charge? I would say not long. Because David said, in the morning and in the afternoon and into the evening time will I seek you. Amen. I don't know about you, but I want my spiritual self to be on full charge all the time. Do you know when the Lord is going to put somebody in your path that needs your full energy, needs your full Holy Ghost energy and input? You can't tell what the Lord wants when he wants to plug you in and use your energy. we got to be plugged in at all times. Just like our body acts as sleep, you know, there's, there's these things called artificial charges. Anybody drink coffee? Becky is on that. Wow. Are you sure, Kyle? You drink coffee? Oh, my goodness. Anybody don't drink coffee in here? Great. You, you still drink coffee, don't you? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Cap this guy, he's got some caffeine over here, okay? Caffeine, right, D? Some sort of boost that some people have, right? If you're not getting the sleep, the real recharge, there's this thing called an artificial recharge, Brother Becker. And you know what? It works. <laughs> Anybody say amen? It works for a while. Right? And then what happens after it's done? Well, I've noticed that when the artificial recharge starts to wear off, that crash is a whole lot steeper. It's not like a softly come down off the clouds, Brother Becker. It's a, whoops, plane fell out, plane ran out of gas, and we're under 30,000 feet. Amen? What I'm saying here is there's some artificial things in this world. Satan likes to put some artificial recharge in you. He, he, he has some things like drugs. He has some things like alcohol. He has some things like addiction, pornography, that will charge you up. But, you know, what happens is there's, there's a drop-off. And every time an artificial recharge is in your spirit or is in your body, there's going to be a a crash. Because at the end of that, that, that high is going to be an emptiness. It's going to be an aloneness that happens. Which is why we all need that reboot, that spiritual reboot, that spiritual recharge. That's what January is all about, amen? That's why we pray and we fast as well. Pastor Bob been preaching about fasting, hasn't he? Once or twice. Has he mentioned what, what some benefits of fasting are? Anybody, anybody test your knowledge of listening to preaching right here? Somebody say some benefits that pastors and preaching about fasting. Finding the will of God. I'm looking for some physical benefits. Oh, detox. He mentioned detox, didn't he? When you fast physically, after three days of fasting, the, for those first three days of fasting, you feel miserable, Sister Brittany. Any better there? The first day of fasting, you just feel miserable, don't you? Do you know the cravings for sugar are still there? 
was craving for that French fry still there. It's just like so. For that steak. I should probably stop because I'm going to be faster right now, probably. Those cravings are still there because those toxins are still in your body. But after about the third day of fasting for straight, your body begins, is, is, is cleansing itself of all those nasty things in your body. In fact, anybody remember waking up after one day of fasting and you got that fast breath? Any salty soul? Yes, I know. That still there. Yeah, that fast breath that you got, that's those toxins coming out. Of your body. And that physical act of fasting is a reboot on your system as pastors have been preaching. It gets out the junk. Fasting is a form of, of rebooting. Not only does it do that, but if you go on, anybody heard of Jet Lag? When you, if you want to ever reset your internal clock, you go on a fast. Because the first meal that you eat after your fast, your body begins to reset internally when your morning is. Begins to reset that. It's the reboot. Amen? Now, all of the spiritual reboot that we need and recharge that we need, we need it spiritually, don't we? We need to come back to that. If a phone needs to be recharged daily, our body and our spirit needs to be recharged just as much because it's more important, isn't it? It is ten times. It, it's in, I can't put it in the number of how much more important it is because it's our soul. Amen. It's our spirit. Hallelujah. I'll come back to that in a little bit here. But have you ever tried, has anybody ever had a problem on their computer? And you, you talk to your smart neighbor or your smart IT person or your, your AJ back here or you call up tech support. What's the first thing they always say, brother, sister? Is it plugged in? Is a great one, yeah. Is it plugged in? And then you immediately say, obviously, I checked that, right? What's the next thing they always ask? Yeah. Yeah, there we go. What's our first solution always when we get all that taken care of? Do you, uh, do you, do you shut it off and turn it back on for me? Just shut it off and turn it back on. Why is it that that always works? I swear, brother AJ, I could I could start a tech business and just focus on that. You shut it off and turn back on for me, real quick. And if you have to be a few dollars, you can send that my way. Anybody with me here? Any? Uh, anybody away to say yes? Hallelujah! It's amazing how that works. You know why it works? Even your devices need a little nap once in a while. Even, even your little cell phone needs to be turned off and back on again. It needs a nap, Brother Lucius. Because it's on all day. It's on all the time. It works out some bugs. And when you reboot that thing, it clears up the system. It clears up some junk. Just like fasting reboots us. But we need to pray when we fast, amen. We need to recharge at the same time, we are rebooting. If you talk to any teacher or any parent, they need a reboot, too. Amen? I was telling Brother Putnam the other day at, at, at Winter Youth, I said, I got my week off of my students, and I'm just like, I just feel like I'm getting a recharge right now. Because after dealing with that, I don't know what to deal with, because I love the students that I have, that I have in my, in my classes. But after a while, it starts to get a little old. It starts to, they, the same person starts to get on your nerves a little bit there, Sister Mills, you know? And you get in the back of the car, says, when are we going to get there a few too many times? You need a reboot of them, don't you? Or a recharge? Just a little time away? That's what summer vacation is for, amen? That's what a winter vacation is for. That's what the spring vacation is for. You just need to get away sometimes, don't you? That acts as a recharge on your body, on your mind. Uh, a lot of the greatest discoveries happen when, when an inventor or somebody walks away from a problem. Walks away from it entirely. Goes and takes a bath, ignores everything, and suddenly there's a moment of clarity. You read, I've got it. It happens because 
because there's a recharge that needs to happen. I tell a lot of my students, because some of them tell me, they, 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 they come back from homework and they say, I spent, brother, Mr. Shiloh, I spent two hours on that homework assignment, I still didn't get it. You know what I usually tell them? You need to stop after about half an hour, okay? Go get something to eat or something, walk away and come back to it. If you still don't get it, then we'll talk tomorrow, but you need to take a break sometimes. You need to take a recharge, walk away from the problem, and get recharged, refreshed. Spiritually, we need to do the same exact thing. We need to reset our eternal clock. We need to reset what our morning is, what our prayer time is. We need to build consistency, amen? This is stuff that we've all heard before, but we need to hear it again many, many times. We need that recharge that is the scripture, amen? You know, in fact, we're right about what? Five, seven, right? Seven is January 7th. It's about a weekend. And everybody's New Year's resolutions are about to be reminded or falling off the map. It's about who started a Bible reading plan. Is everybody still on track? Good. Stick with it. Amen. Keep that foundation. Don't let that be a New Year's resolution. Let that be a reboot. Amen? Let that be something that charges you every day. Because you can't go a day. You can't keep your phone unplugged forever. It's got to be plugged in. What happens what happen when it gets to zero? It dies. It is dead. That same thing can happen spiritually the church. If you don't plug in, you're not going to be able to deal with your problems spiritually. You're going to be able to deal with them in the way God wants you to. Amen? And if you haven't been plugged into the Word of God yet, if you haven't been plugged in to His Holy Ghost, you can get plugged in. You can get charged up. You can get up to 100%. You can get that going. Amen? Second Timothy chapter 4. Verse 17 says, Notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me. This is Paul writing to Timothy. And, he, and what did the Lord do? He strengthened me. I want us to replace the word strengthen with recharge. Because when you recharge something, you build its energy back up, you build its strength back up. Notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me and strengthened me that by me, Preaching might be fully known. You know, church, if we're not fully charged, well, we might not be able to preach what God wants us to when he wants us to. If we're not fully charged on the Spirit of God, we might not be sensitive to the Spirit when, when he needs us to be. And that person you've been praying for on your 7x7 seven seven card needs a moment. And you're not charged up. You might miss that witness and opportunity. You will miss out on what God wants to do in that person's life. I get convicted a lot of times when, when I don't pray. And I go to school and somebody begins to bear their heart to me for some weird reason. And the only thing I can think of saying is, man, that sounds tough. Get convicted in my spirit because I know that I've got the Holy Ghost and I can bring something to them. But I just don't know what it is at this moment. And you know, the Lord is dealing with me on that. What is the Lord dealing with you on right here tonight? What sort of recharge do you need here tonight, amen? The Lord, Jesus Christ himself, as a man, he needed recharges. Every time he did something miraculous, he got away from everybody. Luke chapter 5, verses 15 and 16 here, says, But so much the more went their fame abroad of him, that is Jesus, and great multitudes came together to hear and to be healed by him of their infirmities. And he withdrew himself into the wilderness and prayed. 
church. We need to withdraw ourselves to pray. We need to withdraw ourselves to pray just like Jesus did. Look what Jesus was facing. He was facing fame. He was facing healing. People were coming to him in droves. He needed him. But Jesus, as a man, knew, I cannot do this. It needs to be the Spirit of God that dwells in me. The same is true with us, church. There's a county that you live in, that you work in, that needs to be reached. There's souls that need to be touched, church. And we are rebooting this year. In the name of Jesus, we are rebooting. We are getting back on track. And when you keep that Bible reading chart going, when you keep that Bible reading plan going in your family, when you keep that as a foundation, you are changing your family tree. You are changing the impact you are going to make at your workplace, at your school. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. The Lord, he is here tonight, church. Can we all stand here? There's a reboot that needs to happen. But there's a recharge that has to happen as well. Church, the Lord has a plan for each of us. And you know, let's all, as we come towards the altar here tonight, and as we get prepared to plug into his word, get charged up for a week. We need to be charged up and ready to distribute the gospel of the kingdom. Amen. Church, I'm excited about this time that we live in. There are people in the world that are scared of the world they live in. But that's because they don't know that God has a plan. There are people who are scared because of nuclear stuff and people dying. There are wars and rumors of wars happening all around the globe, church. There are things happening that we don't even know that are damaging and destroying families' lives that don't have the gospel. But with all of that turmoil, there is a revival that is happening. There are hungry souls that want to know what is going to happen. And we are going to be able to be properly equipped to distribute the gospel unless we are recharged, church. Unless we are filled with the Holy Ghost. Unless we are repentant. Unless we are in tune with the Holy Ghost. Amen. So all around this place, I want to recharge you tonight. I want to plug into the gospel. I don't want to wait to see how close I can get to zero before I recharge. I want to recharge right away. And church, the best thing about our God is we don't need to get to an outlet to plug in. Our outlet is always ready to connect to us. Our God is so good, he will bring the outlet to us to plug in, to charge us up, because all we need to do is lift up our voice and begin to talk to him. All we need to do is open up that word of God and begin to read that word that will give us peace, that passes understanding. Amen? So all across this place, there's an altar right here, and it's ready to be just for you to plug in. Go ahead and just begin to reach out your hands. Begin to reach up your, your arms and plug into your gospel right now. To your God. Let's begin all across this place to just pray. Let's begin to repent right here. Lord Jesus, as we reboot here tonight, Lord God. God, we want to reboot. We want to plug in. We want to charge up by the Holy Ghost. Go ahead right now. Well, the way we recharge ourselves is by plugging into the Holy Ghost. 